Okay, so before we get into the tutorial, I just wanted to go over some of the details of this pattern. I call it the Bermuda Brief because it's got a higher waist length, which means it's going to sit a little bit higher on your waist than the uh, regular boxer brief. Also, I gave you an option for two different lengths on the inseam, and this one is actually at the full length, and then uh, the other length I give you an option to cut about halfway up the inseam, and there's a dotted line for that on the pattern. So there are four different views, A, B, C, and D, and view A is very similar. It's exactly the same as the regular boxer brief, which has a center seam um, down the front, which at, gives you a, a shaped front pouch. View B does the same thing with the exception that the seam doesn't go all the way up the center. We just have this, uh, basically it's just a dart and then with, to give you shape and then it's basically a flat front up here in the front. And then view C has the same center front seam as view A, um, but it actually gives you an opening here for easy access and then the top of it has the flat front as in view B. And then view D actually has a fly front that is very similar to the classic hip brief um, where you have access this way. And the shape of the front is actually built here in the curved area of the front. So it may look a little bit, bit odd, but this is where the shape and the fullness comes for um, your body. So another thing that I just wanted to mention is that I'm using this one quarter inch wide sport elastic. Um, and I like this because it's really supple, it has a good stretchability, and it's quite soft, and it doesn't actually kind of cut or dig into your body when you're wearing it. So now that I've gone over the details of the garment, let's get right to the tutorial. Okay, so when you're getting ready to lay out your fabric, we're going to double it over. So we're just going to make sure that everything is nice and flat and there aren't any ripples or bubbles or anything folded over. Just double check on the back side as well. Make sure everything is nice and flat. And if you feel like you stretched the fabric while you were trying to smooth it out, I would let it rest for a few minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, and that will ensure that the stretch kind of comes back to where it was to begin with. That way you're not cutting out pieces of fabric that are overstretched. Okay, so as I um, mentioned before, um, I'm going to actually cut out the bodies of the underwear in the same color, this blue color, and then the center, the front pouch areas, I'm going to actually cut in a green. So um, I've chosen to actually do that, uh, it's called color blocking. I didn't mention that on the actual pattern itself, the pattern information pages, I just say um, the total amount of yardage that you're going to need. So if you want to do a color blocking for the front pouch or any other areas, you'll need to figure out what those amounts of the fabric that you're gonna need for that particular color. So. In this layout, I'm going to lay out the back piece here. Again, these are the greatest stretch areas, so it's usually in the width of the fabric that is your stretch, so I'm gonna lay it out here, and this arrow, it goes in the direction of that stretch, and it should be perpendicular to the edge of your fabric. So I'm gonna weight the back down, and this is the largest pattern piece. And also, um, I just wanna mention these dotted lines here are for you to cut if you want a shorter inseam. If you feel like this leg is too long for you, then I have cut it in half, so it's a, about the half of the height of this. So that's just in a suggestion if you want it for a shorter short. So I'm gonna lay this out here, but if you notice, I've got my front here, and I'm gonna be, um, you know, missing all of this fabric, so I don't wanna waste this. So what I've done for the front pattern is I'm actually gonna flip it over, and here I've already drawn my grain line, and I've also drawn my notch here that I need to cut out. So I just kinda of transferred those from the front so that I know that when I flip this over to actually conserve fabric, and that looks pretty good. Again, this arrow is going in the stretch of the fabric, the greatest stretch, which is also perpendicular to the side of your fabric. So I'm going to just cut, I mean lay my weights down. 
And now I'm just gonna cut around um, this side. And this is the part where I'm going to actually speed up the video for you so you don't have to see me uh, cut out every piece um, in real time. And also, I'm also gonna speed up cutting out the front pouch areas. There's no real um, information you need, extra information that you need to know about those. Um, I'm just gonna be cutting those out of the green fabric. So all of the cutting parts will be sped up. Okay, so now that everything is cut out, we're actually just gonna work on the front part and getting the pouch on the front so we can uh, set the backs aside for right now. So uh, what we need to do is we need to actually work on these front pouch parts and this is view A. So what you should have for view A is I have cut uh, one as a lining. So I have actually four pieces, so that's two pair. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you put your face sides together for each pair. And then once you've got your face sides together, then just stack the two pair on top of each other and make sure that everything lines up and your notch here lines up. This is the notch that actually we're gonna match to the front once we get the front sewn together. Now, if you don't want to line it, that's fine. Then you'll just have the one pair that you're gonna sew together along the center front line. So I'm just going to pin these so you can actually see where we're gonna be sewing. So right here on this outside curve, we're gonna use the overlock or here in the US, it's the serger. So sew from one end to the other, and then we'll come right back here and turn it face side out. Okay, so now that the uh, center front is sewn together, we can actually turn this face side out. And what you'll see is basically what you're looking for is both sides of the front pouch is your face side. So if you have a printed fabric, both sides would show the print. And it doesn't really matter which side to show on the outside. Now, if you didn't line it, then you would have a seam in the, in the middle and then it will matter. So this is my front pouch and I've got my notches here. We're gonna match it to the front. So let me just show you what this will look like on either side. So this is the front, okay. And I've got notches here on either side of the front. So we're gonna match uh, one of the right sides of the pouch. And of course it's the same on either side. We're gonna match that, I'd like to match up the notch first. Make sure that both of them are together and then match the pouch notch to one of the front notches and go ahead and pin it in place. And then you'll just match up the edges of the fabrics. 
This fabric is a little sticky. So I can actually work with this once I'm in the machine just to make sure everything is lined up. So now to get to the bottom here, which is actually the crotch, they are, we're working on two different curves. So what I like to do first is I'm just going to match the end of the pouch to the end of the front at the crotch, and I'll pin that. And because we have these two curves, sometimes they don't like to line up. Um, you may need to stretch the pouch into the body curve. It's always better to stretch the pouch than the actual garment. So I've got some pins kind of going on here. They're kind of in on a lot of different directions. So all you need to do is decide which side you want to start your sewing. If you want to come down this way or if you want to come from the crotch up to the waist. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. I generally like to come from the crotch up to the waist because this is where our waistband is going to be. So if the, the pouch stretches out as we sew, it's okay if we need to cut that off a little bit, but not here in the curve. So I'm actually going to do this at the same time. So this is kind of what it'll look like when it's sewn. I've got it pinned. So I'm going to actually pin the other side at the same time. And that will save us some time coming back here to the the pinning table. And I'll just get this one pinned up and then I'll sew both of these together. Well, not together, I'll sew each side um, over at the machine at the same time. And then if everything works out well, then we'll be able to work on the back. Get this pinned up to the crotch here. And kind of have a look at those that lines up pretty well. I'll just put a pin there to keep it in place. And of course, I'll be removing these pins as I sew. Okay, so I've got all my inside all pinned ready to go. This will kind of be what it looks like when it is sewn. But um, let's just go over to the machine and get these two seams sewn up. Okay, so this is uh, the front. We've got the front pouch sewn on here. This is the inside, and this is what it looks like on the outside. So now that that is done, we can actually work on our back. So I'm gonna set this aside for right now. Okay, so now we're going to work on view B, and view B, um, as in boy, uh, looks very similar to view A, that the front pouch is actually joined together, and we just have this small area here that needs to be sewn together. Um, it's basically just a curved dart. Now, I have two pieces here. I cut two because I'm going to line um, my pair. Um, if you're not going to line your underwear, then you only need to actually do this once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to um, fold it in half with face sides together. So this is my face side and I'm just folding it together. So now it actually looks exactly like view A. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew 
overlock this curve right here and then we're going to gradually sew right off right about here and so I'm going to do that the same uh, the same thing with this other piece which is the same thing and then I will actually just stitch them together with that seam and I will explain that uh, how to do that when we after we sew this seam so I'm going to do this separately instead of doing them together like we did with view a because of sewing off here will actually leave kind of a little bump and I don't want to actually have that so I'm going to sew these individually these seams here again I'm going to gradually sew off um, and then we will come back here um, and I'll show you how to tack them together Okay, so now that I have the uh, pouch sewn together, pouches sewn together, um, I'm just gonna actually tack them together, but let's have a quick look and see what it looks like on the outside. So this is basically what it will look like on the outside, and we just have this one small seam here, which is actually a shaped dart, basically, and there's no center front seam that goes all the way up. So this is just another option for your um, underwear style. So I'm gonna, Put that back so now we're, we're looking at the wrong side of the fabric and all we need to do is just stack them on to each other and what we're going to do is we're going to tack them right in here right in the middle of this stitching and we can put a pin there just to hold everything together and i'm going to stop my stitching probably somewhere right right around here we still want a little bit of movement. If I go all the way up to here, then these two are going to be held here together and it might cause some um, puckering at the top. But we're going to turn these basically face sides out on either side and that will actually be the lining. Okay? So I'm going to stitch these together really quick. Okay, so now that our front pouches are stitched together, tacked together, now we can actually turn uh, the face side out, right? So we wanna make sure that we see the face side of both. Now, if your lining is the same color as your garment, which mine is here, it doesn't really which matter which side. If you have a print, um, you're using the same fabric for the inside and the outside, then make sure that you have the print side going out toward the outside when you pin it to the front of your garment. So what I'm going to do is I'm next going to make sure that these are actually all lined up correctly, matching each of their cut edges and the top. And I'm just going to put pins here on this side. Just kind of hold this in place and make sure that my notches are lined up here as well. This fabric that I'm using is uh, mostly cotton with a little bit of elastane in it. It stretches, but it uh, likes to stick to each other. Okay, so that's what it will look like. And now we can work with the fronts. So I've got my two fronts here. And I have the notches, so we're going to match the notches on either side. And this is just like view A, where I'm going to match the notch face side to face side. So I'm going to first match that notch up here. And then I can match the rest of the edges. and I'm pinning in the direction that I'm going to sew. So I think I'll sew this one from the top down to the crotch, and then I'm going to match this crotch edge here. 
make sure you're matching your cut edges together. And then I'm just going to make sure that this actually aligns up here. Try not to stretch the garment side, the body side. That would be the blue pieces that I'm working with. That would be the body. Right, and that looks pretty good. So I can flip this over so you can kind of see that's the way it's going to sew. So now I'm going to actually match this to this side, and I'm going to sew both of the front crotch seams, I mean the front pouch seams together. So I can do that. There's not a lot of fabric here to work with, so um, I'll be okay. So as soon as I get these pinned, then I can come over and sew these seams up. And we'll be ready, you'll be ready to actually work on your back. The back is the same. Adjoining the back and the back to the front at the side seams is the same for all the views. I'll just use this one, this pin here. All right, so this is what the inside looks like that it's all pinned, and this is what the outside will look like once we get it sewn. So I'm gonna go to the overlock and stitch these seams up real quick, and then we'll be ready to work on the back. Okay, so this is the inside. You can see the seam here. And then I will turn it to the face side and we can see that we have, we still have a pouch shape here at the bottom and that there's no center front seam here going up to the top. If you've got all of this together, you're ready to move on to working with the back. Okay, so we're ready to start working on view C, and there are two pieces for view C for the front pouch. Um, there is an upper part, and then there is the lower part, and the lower part looks very similar to view A and B, um, in which it has this front um, curve here. And that's what we're actually gonna work on first, and we're gonna actually do that the exact same way we did view A. Um, which was that we have two pairs here, and the reason I have two pairs is because I'm lining. If you're not going to line view C, then you will just have one of these, and you're gonna stitch this outer curve all the way up um, to the top. But be, since I'm lining this, I'm completely lining the front pouch areas, um, I have two pair, so I've got my pairs with my face sides together, both pairs, and then I'm going to lie them on top of each other, and I'm gonna stitch them all the pieces together along this outer curve. I'll just pin everything together so you can see that.
and this is actually the lower part of the pouch. And then this, this part here is the upper part of the pouch. And um, we have notches here. And um, this notch here is actually to actually match the, the body, the front body. And then the notch on this upper part here is actually to match the top of the, the front pouch area. Um, to actually stitch the, those together. So we're actually going to do that before we actually get to putting it here on the front. So I know that sounds confusing, but we're going to get there. Um, so for this upper part, we can actually do this next step um, at the machine as well, as well when we do the outer curve here of the front pouch. And we just need to actually just match these together. Now, even if you're lining the front pouch here um, on this guy here, you don't have to do uh, two layers of this if you don't want to, but I just felt like this was really kind of lightweight, so I'm actually going to do two layers for the upper part of the pouch as well. And all I need to do is I'm matching these wrong sides together, and I'm just gonna use the overlock and actually sew these together so they're attached. And that's all I need to do to this piece. So this is the lower part, and that's where we're actually going to match the pouch, actually, once we get it all hemmed. So you'll see, you'll understand once we get the pouch done. So just at this lower end, overlock this area down here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to the overlock just one more time. I'm gonna overlock this outer curve, and then I'm gonna overlock the top of this here. Okay, so I have the lower front pouch all sewn together and the upper part of the front um, sewn together. And this we can just set aside for right now. And we'll work with this, this part right now. So I'm gonna turn this face side out, face sides out. So both of the face sides are going out if you are lining yours. If you're not lining it, obviously you know which side is uh, the face side that you're gonna be working with. So now I have both my face sides. And what I need to do before I attach it to this um, piece up here, this we're gonna actually attach it up here, we're gonna tack it on the sides, there's gonna be an opening there. Um, what I'm gonna do is I want to hem this upper part. I have a half inch hem here at the top, I'm gonna turn over and then I'm going to zigzag it down or you could use your cover stitch machine. Um, but one thing I didn't mention before is before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and overlock this edge so again, as you're looking at this at the top, I'm gonna to overlock this edge, and then I'm gonna turn it down a half inch, and I'm going to zigzag it down in place, just like I'm hemming um, the top of it, okay? And I'm gonna do both of those things before I come back to the table. So I will do that right now. Okay, so now that our front lower pouch is done, it's got all, it's all hemmed and it's all um, almost ready to be put onto the fronts. Um, what I'm gonna do to this part, now if you've lined this, remember that you have wrong sides together and you've overlocked the lower edge. It's the uh, shorter side to the notches. Um, this is actually up here, the longer side is actually where the waistband is gonna go. So what we need to do is I have these two notches here. We're going to match the edge of my hemmed side up to those notches. And I'm actually just going to pin 
one a pin on either side just to keep everything in place pin it like this and then I'm going to this is going to be nice and flat I'm just going to do a straight stitch right along each of these edges and that's just going to hold it in place so it doesn't move around and move around on me while I'm sewing it sewing with it and then this notch here which is very short to the hem area is actually where we're going to match to the front okay so with a straight stitch or your regular sewing machine just tack these two pieces together Okay, so uh, we have the uh, front pouch um, tacked together, front and back, um, and uh, I wasn't really paying attention before earlier, but when you tack these together, I went a little overboard here, you want to tack them a little shorter than a quarter inch seam. See how close I got here on this side? And that's because my overlocking is going to be about a quarter inch seam allowance, and that's what I um, gave you in the pattern so just be sure if you don't want those to be seen when it's worn so now I'm actually ready to attach this front pouch to the fronts so I've got my fronts and I'm gonna lay these patterns side to side like I've done with the other pouches and um, I, these are all face sides so I'm gonna match the, the notches face side to face side and again this little notch here right on the lower front pouch here that's why I'm, what I'm going to match to the front body piece so there's that notch and yeah it's a little bit thick here at that point but um, your overlock will go through it and then I'll match all the raw edges just like we did to the other pouch and then I'll match down here at the crotch. Okay. And I'm just going to get this pinned up really quickly on both sides. Again, this is what it will look like when it's sewn. And I can actually leave it that way, and it's just easier to see, I think. This is the outside. So if I flip this all over on top of this other piece, match at the notches get this all pinned together so you can see what it will look like and then one more down here at the crotch and that's all I need again I'll have to take these pins out before I sew and then I'll probably have to continue to readjust these edges as I sew right that looks pretty good Okay, so this is what the inside looks like pinned, and then this is what the outside will look like. And there is uh, an opening here for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and overlock these two seams, and we'll be right back here. All right, so this is the inside of view C, and from the uh, outside there is this hole here, um, and I'm going to turn this to the face side now, so we can see what the front looks like here 
of course, is that hole, if this is the style of brief that you like. So again, this is view C. And if you're at this point, then you're all ready to start working with the back pieces. Okay, so now we're going to be working on view D as in David. So um, this is the pattern piece and these are the pieces that I cut. Now it says cut one pair, cut two self. They must be mirrored pieces. So I'm going to flip these out to the face side so we can see both pieces. So what's going to happen is that one of these is going to overlap the other. So I'm going to stack this on top of here and you see we'll have the opening here but we also will have an opening on the inside so um, this is where you'll have to decide which side you want that opening now I don't have a lining because it's basically self lining so it's just the two pieces and the two pieces are we re are required to actually um, actually make the underwear otherwise you'll just have a big hole there so I'm going to set the pattern piece aside and now what we'll, let's have a look at this as if it were just kind of like with both of the front body pieces. So I'm going to lay these out. So now we have a left and a right body piece. Now you'll have to decide on the outside which side you want the hole, um, open the fly opening to be on. Do you want it to be on your left side? As you're watching me, it's your right side, but on the body, this is the left side opening or do you want it on the right side? It can be interchangeably. So I'm gonna have mine um, on the right side. So what I need to do is I'm gonna match these up here at the top, and then this notch here is actually where the underside of the bottom curve is going to be matched to. And likewise on this side, this notch, you match the edge of that there. And so once we get these all tacked together, this will actually be the front. Now there's a couple things we needed to do before we get to that point, is we need to finish this curved edge here. And we need to finish them on both sides. So there's a couple ways to do this. You could just overlock it and leave it that way and not worry about it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually overlock the outside um, layer, and then I'm gonna turn it over fold it over a quarter inch and I'm going to zigzag on the outside. I'm just going to zigzag that, that down. And then for the inside piece, I'm just going to keep it overlocked. So I'm going to actually mark which one here with a pin. This is going to be the outside. So this is the side I'm actually going to turn over. And I'm going to do that all at the machine before I come back here to the table. So just to um, reiterate, I'm going to overlock both of the curves both of the curves here. This is my underlaying piece and I'm going to leave this one just overlocked. But this one, after I overlock it, I'm going to go to the zigzag machine. I'm going to turn the overlocking to the inside and I probably have to stretch a little bit as we work around that curve and you'll see me do that in the machine. Um, zigzag it down to hold it down in place just like we're doing a, a simple hem. So I'm going to take care of all that before I come back to the table.
Okay, so now I have both my front pieces prepared, and I would like to point out that this zigzag, um, I actually used a little bit wider zigzag on this, and now I'm probably thinking maybe a more narrow one would have been better. Um, mine was set at five millimeter wide, um, so I probably would have, uh, if I do this again, I will probably switch it down to about a four millimeter wide. That's the width of the zigzag going across. And it did stretch out a little bit, so um, it, that will probably come back in the wash. It will probably kind of shrink up a little bit. Um, now, if you know how to do binding, and I have other uh, garments where I've done binding, you could actually do a binding piece around this area as well. Um, just remember that I do have a quarter inch seam allowance on here, so I would cut off that seam allowance first before you do the binding. Um, and if uh, you want to learn how to do the binding, check out some of my other videos where um, there's an extra piece of fabric going around like the armholes or something like that. You could also put a piece of elastic in here if you want to bring that back, give it a little bit more um, elasticity. You could put a small piece of elastic in there as well, but I just chose not to. There are no pattern pieces for the binding. There are no measurements for that elastic that I just mentioned. Um, so I didn't build the pattern with it. So um, now we need to actually finish the front. So this is the outside. So I'm going to put the outside directly on top of it. So it would be this wrong side to this face side. And I'm going to lie this right on top here. And I'm gonna match this corner, the lower end of the opening to that notch here and line up those angles to the end. And then I'll just go ahead and put a pin there to hold everything together. And then I'm gonna match up here at the top. Here, these will go together. It's pretty straightforward. You just need to make sure everything gets lined up I did not put a notch up here to match those because I didn't want the confusion with this other notch to happen. So now I'm just gonna flip this over really quick. I'm gonna make sure that this other opening is also matching the notch down here on the lower side. And I'll just kind of put a pin here on the outside. Now, this it's up to you if you wanna go ahead and um, uh, stitch across here to hold all the layers together. I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. You don't have to do that, but I'm going to do it just to keep everything together so I don't have all these pins um, while I'm actually sewing the front um, pouch area to the body. So I'm going to do that really quick and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have my front fly areas all tacked together and they're ready to actually be sewn to the body of the garment. So I've got my two notches here, my side notches, and I'm gonna match this notch to this notch and this notch to this notch. We're gonna match face sides together. So I'm gonna first do this side over here and it will match this notch here. Now, if you look at this really quickly, I have two different curves. I have a concave and a convex. So we're going to have to do a little uh, wiggling here, a little stretching, and we're actually going to actually match all the way down. This is one long curve all the way down to this point. So I'm first going to match here. And then because it's a curve, the reason the front area has a curve is actually to fit the body in that area, the curved area of the body, and to give you room to breathe. So everything actually um, sits in there. That's what that curve is for, so that it doesn't smash everything against your body. And I'm just going to line these all the way up to the top. Okay, 
So that's what the inside looks like. And when we flip it out here, it will have this curved area. And that curve in this body pouch gives you enough room to breathe. And I'm going to do the same thing with this other side. Match my notch. And then the final end points here. It looks like a straight line, but it really isn't because it goes right back into this curve of the front area, which is the front pouch, but it's really the front fly. Goes back into the curve of that. And this will ease right in when we sew. Get the rest of this pinned up here. All right, so this is what the inside looks like as it's pinned. And then if we turn it up, this is what the outside will look like. All right, so now all we need to do is overlock these two seams together. Okay, so this is the inside. Now we've got our, um, our front fly seams done. And I'll flip it over to the outside. This is the uh, face side of the garment, the outside. And here is our uh, fly, which is open. And then, of course, underneath, there's that opening as well. All right, so if you got to this point, you are now ready to work with the back. Okay, so this is the back pieces and I've got my face sides together and I'm lining everything up along the center back seam and I'm gonna go ahead and pin this together just so you can see. Um, if you don't feel like you need to pin to get this sewn together, that's fine. I'm just actually just pinning so you can see where I'm gonna be sewing. So I'm gonna sew right along this line and then we'll be right back here at the table. Okay, so this is the back that's been sewn along the center back seam, and uh, of course we can just have a look at the inside. This is what it looks like on the inside, and then this is what it looks like on the outside. And we have our crotch seam here, and this is the waist up here. So let's go ahead and bring our front pieces in. So this was the front piece that we were uh, working on, and actually I'm going to start with that piece. I'm gonna move the back out of the way. So I'm gonna lay the front here, and I have a seam here that um, tells me that it's the center. And of course, on my back, I have at the crotch, I have a seam as well. So I'm going to match those seams face sides together. So I'm going to put the back, the face side of the back, and I'm gonna match those seam lines together and I'm just gonna put a pin across. And then I will just go ahead and walk the rest of the crotch seam along to the hem and I'll put a pin. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. I'll just walk those edges up along together and then pin. Be careful not to stretch. These should actually match up 
pretty perfectly. Now one thing that I will um, advise you about is on these, this seam here on the front, you'll want to make sure that these are folded away. Um, you could fold them in going inward, um, that will make some sort of uh, a little bit of bulk there, but you'll want these to be pressed away. That way they won't um, become uncomfortable while you're wearing them. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take a pin and just pin those going in the correct direction. Okay, and then of course when I'm sewing, I will just be careful that I keep in mind that those seams need to be folded away from the center. Okay, so now that that is all pinned together, we can go over and we're gonna sew the crotch seam all the way along that line. Okay, so now that we have our crotch seam done and our seams are folded the correct way, I can just fold this out so you can see what that looks like. This is the front and this is the back and we're gonna keep them face sides together. And all we need to do now is just with face sides together, match up our side seams from the hem to the waist. And be careful because your fabrics will want to curl on the cut edges. So just loosely pin all along that side seam. Try not to stretch the garment as you're working with it. Okay, one side to go. And I'm just going to get this pinned in place and I think I'll probably have to repin once I am in the machine to make sure the pins are going the right way. Um, if you notice, if you're pinning far away enough from the edge, you don't have to actually remove the pins as you're sewing. Okay, so now I've got those pins. I'm just going to go and sew up the side seams and then we'll be ready for the waistband. Okay, so now we have the uh, side seam sewn together. It's the front, and here's the back. I'm just going to turn this face side out. And we almost have a pair, completed pair of underwear here. So this is what it looks like um, on the uh, front and then on the back. And now uh, we're actually all ready to do the waistband and I'm and I've done an exposed waistband for this so that's what we're going to work on right now okay so we're ready to prepare the waistband for this pair of underwear um, and the pattern um, I built it for one and a quarter inch wide elastic and um, if you haven't seen my videos before I really like this uh, elastic it's by Dritz this is the one quarter inch sport elastic and the reason I like this is because it has a great degree of flexibility and it's not really stiff it has a nice supple feel to it so um, the reason I like this is because it doesn't feel like it's cutting into my body when I'm wearing it so that's why I like this um, so again it's by Dritz one and a quarter inch sport elastic and I've pre-cut my elastic here for the length that I need and what I need to do is I actually need to sew this together in a loop. So um, I have seam allowances included in the uh, in the amounts that I suggest. And of course, um, if you want to use your own measurement, that's fine. Um, so the the seam allowance that's included is a half inch. And so I'm going to actually fold this together. 
um, and this has kind of a wrong side and a right side and this the more ribbed side is actually the outside and the flatter inside um, is actually the inside so I'm gonna match this together and I'm gonna sew this together with a half inch seam allowance so I'm just gonna mark those off and I'm using a in uh, invasible erasable uh, pen as marking tools so I'm just gonna mark on either side I don't know which side I'm gonna want to put in the machine just a half inch and I'm gonna do all the finishing there at the uh, machine so what I'm gonna do if I can just walk you through this real quick is along my line that I've drawn my half inch seam allowance I'll pin it here just so you can kind of see what I'm gonna do once I get that sewn I'm gonna actually fold these out fold that seam allowance and then I'm going to zigzag up and down here just to keep that together and to keep this from this edge from fraying so um, I'm not sure what the zigzag length and stitch is so I will post that on the video once I'm at the uh, machine All right, so now that we have the elastic in a ring, and hopefully you didn't get it twisted, um, we're gonna fold it in half right on that seam line and fold it in half, and I'm going to put a pin here on the opposite side. Now our ring will be divided in half. So now I have a pin and I have the seam. So I'm gonna match the pin to that seam, and then I'm going to put a pin on either side of here. So I'll put a pin here and put a pin here. And now our ring is divided into four equal parts. And uh, you could also just put marks if you have an erasable pen or chalk, that would be fine. So now that our ring is divided into four equal parts, we're ready to pin it to the garment. Okay, so this is the garment we're going to actually pin the elastic to. So I actually have four equal seams here. That's the way I built this pattern. So I have a center front seam, and then I have the center back seam, and then I have the two side seams. So I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to start here on the back. And uh, that seam that you did where you had the rough edges, that's going to go face down onto the back. And we're going to match the edges of the fabric when we pin this. So I'm just going to pin this here, and I may have to repin it. Let's see, when I put this through the machine, uh, the pin will go this way. Okay, and then I'm going to walk the elastic around. I'm going to match the pin, each of the pins, to a seam. So this pin from the center back is the side seam. So I'm going to pin it down here at the bottom, because this is where we're actually going to sew. So even though I've matched the edge of the garment to the edge of the top of the elastic, I'm actually going to pin it down here at the bottom or maybe in the middle that's okay and then I'll match the center front with the next pin and then I'll continue on and matching the next pin at the side seam now of course to keep everything um, straight and flat you could also put a pin up here but that's you know that's kind of over pinning but that's okay now you notice that the elastic might be a little bit smaller than the garment and that's what we want we're actually going to want to stretch the elastic to match the garment but sometimes the garment stretches and that's okay if we stretch the garment equally with the elastic that's fine so now where we have it pinned 
is whoops on the center front the center back and the two side seams now if you want to go around and re pin here in the middle of where you're going to be sewing that's fine just kind of stretch the elastic to match the garment and then find the middle of that if it will help you in your sewing this is absolutely fine to pin in the middle between those seams and since I'm here at the front, I will just advise you again, just like I did with the crotch down here. You want these seams to go away from the center front. So keep that in mind when you are sewing the elastic on. So I'm just gonna continue around here and I'm gonna pin here at the middle. Make sure you're matching the edge of the elastic to the edge of the garment. And whoops, this is getting caught. Okay, and then one last pin here on the back. I may need to stretch that a little bit. That's fine. Okay, so everything is nicely pinned. I'm actually gonna start here at the center back. So I'll probably start a little bit here and we'll continue to sew across so that when we come back here, we can just stitch straight over where we started and not necessarily have to worry about back stitching. I may do a one or two back stitches. Now I do know the length of the uh, zigzag stitch that I want to use for the elastic. So it should be a four millimeter long by four millimeter wide. So I'm going to run over to the machine and I'm going to get this zigzagged on real quick. Okay, so now we have the uh, waistband on and I just want to mention that if you feel like uh, your zigzag stitch is too long, of course you can shorten it and you can widen it any way you want. If you have a cover stitch machine, you could also apply the elastic with your cover stitch machine as well as the hem and we're about to uh, get there ju in just a minute. So uh, you could also run a double row of zigzag on top of this one um, if you feel you need a little bit more support there. So I'm actually gonna do one thing that you don't have to do. I'm gonna turn this inside out right away, um, just really quickly. And um, I'm actually going to trim this extra fabric off here between the uh, waistband. So I'm just gonna come here and I'm gonna clip close to the uh, zigzag stitch. I'm just going to cut the extra away. So you don't have to do this. You could also run a zigzag stitch on the top of the elastic to hold this in here if that's your preference. Now, while I'm doing this, some of you may want to do a rolled waistband and you'll um, probably ask me if you can do that. Now I have an inch and a quarter in allowance for the top of this. So if you choose to do that with say three quarter inch elastic um, and then turn it or even an inch elastic, just understand that you're gonna lose some of the height. So, and that's by just turning this over and then stitching it down again. Um, so you could do that. You just may need to add a little bit of height at the top of the, the pattern. Okay, so I've got that done. I'm going to turn this face out out because I'm going to get ready to do the hem. So 
So we're looking pretty good here. So now we're gonna work on this hem. Okay, so we're ready to do the hem on here. Now you have an option. You can overlock this edge here and that's fine if you wanna do that. I'm not going to do that because I feel like that adds to some bulk and I don't really have to worry about because this isn't gonna um, actually unravel. Even if I pull, it's not really unraveling that much. And once we turn it over and stitch it down, um, it's gonna be covered and we're not gonna have to worry about that. Now, I'm not a big fan of pinning. So I'm gonna show you a trick so you don't have to pin. Of course, if you wanna pin this up, the seam allowance here or the hem allowance here on both the bottom um, legs are three quarters of an inch. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna mark with some chalk three quarters of an inch up from the cut edge. And I'm just going to dot it along that edge at three quarters of an inch. And what this will allow me to do is just to turn it up there at that mark instead of having to pin it. And because this is knit, we will probably need to stretch a little bit as we sew this, just a little bit, so we fit it into the curve here. I have a slight curve here. And that's just to cup around the leg. So I'm gonna get the rest of this marked, and then I will be over at the machine to turn it up and stitch it. And I'm actually gonna use the same stitch length for the zigzag stitch as I did for the waistband. So that's four millimeter long and four millimeter wide. Okay, and there we have it. We have our finished pair of underwear. So we have our hem here, and as I mentioned before, um, anywhere I use a zigzag, you could actually use your cover stitch machine. So if you want to use your cover stitch machine for the hem here, just understand that you're going to be seeing the outside of the garment. So when you turn this, you may need to put a little marker on your machine for that three quarters of an inch so that your cover stitch on the underside covers the cut edge. And I tried to grab on the zigzag just the edge of my cut edge here. So that's how I did that. And these marks will come out in the wash. So again, let me just turn this um, inside out just so we can have a quick look at what the inside looks like. This is the front. And this is how we did the waistband. I cut the extra off of here. And then this is the back. We have a regular crotch seam at the center back, which gives it a little bit more shape. And I'll turn it face side out. And there we have the finished project.